Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I'm John. This is Minion True Nerd, and welcome back to Stellaris Apocalypse. But not quite the Stellaris Apocalypse you left. Uh, let me tell you a little bit about me and Stellaris. So basically, I may have got a little bit overexcited when I received early review code for Stellaris Apocalypse, and basically said, "Oh my goodness, it's Stellaris Apocalypse! I'm going to play it forever!" And then immediately started playing it. And I may have got so excited, I may have forgotten to do some, you know, basic standard YouTubing 101 checks, like, "Hey, what resolution am I recording in, and what resolution am I playing in?" Because I just kind of threw it straight up onto my biggest monitor and they went oh it's so pretty and failed to realize that I was playing in 1440p but recording at 1080p so as a result the text for you guys was really really tiny and hard to read and that really bugged me a few people pointed it out and it really bugs me when I put out something that I think isn't perfect and not quite right so basically after much soul searching I decided to basically throw in the bin all the work I did yesterday because that game I'd already recorded the next few parts so I threw quite a few hours working the bin and I've decided to start again because the first part, the part you've actually seen, we only got a little bit into the game. We explored like four systems and I explained some of the basics. It will not take me long to get back there and it will just be a more pleasant experience for everyone because if you were watching on anything but a massive screen, the text was a little bit small and that's my bad. I normally always check what resolution I'm recording in versus what resolution I'm actually playing in. But on the plus side, this does mean I get to spend another entire day playing Stellaris. So, you know what? It's not all hardship. Though actually, uh, one thing I do want to point out, yeah, um, you notice that ship over there on the right? In 1440p, that wasn't there. Every time I launched the game in 1440p, that ship's not there. Little flashing lights on all its wings are there, but no, apparently in 1440p, you get stealth death stars, which is pretty bloody impressive. So we are indeed going to start again, but obviously I'm going to skip over large parts of what we covered last time. Pretty much we're going to get back to where we were. This is our new galaxy, by the way. I actually like it more than our old galaxy. So in our old galaxy, we're starting like somewhere like equivalent to being like about over here. We were basically on the outer spiral, albeit with a tiny little kind of spine behind us. But here we've actually started on the middle arm, which is actually kind of more interesting. So it means we've got, yeah, this whole space behind us here. We've got this space in front of us here. In general, it means we've got more choke points around us which I think is potentially going to make for a more interesting game. So we've got these choke points over here to get up to this bit, this long choke point here, these two choke points that lead down, well, I suppose there's a third one over here, these choke points that lead down onto the inner spiral, more choke points over here. Yeah, actually, I think this has potentially got the ingredients for a more exciting game overall. But generally, everything's pretty much as it was. One thing I've noticed is, like, uh, these days, your random starting system seems to be a lot less random than it used to be. Like, you tend to start off with, like, about six energy, about six minerals, and a handful of science, half of which is already collected for you. So pretty much there's going to be no major changes versus what you've already seen. And I'm going to do pretty much all the exact same thing. So down here on repose, first thing I want to do is actually slap down. Where's the best spot for Actually, that's not bad. That's not a bad starting plan at all. In fact, I'm almost kind of sad to squish any of these spots, but we kind of have to uh, because I want to get a temple down as quickly as possible and I want to get another science ship out because I just believe in getting science ships out. And if I'm very lucky, this time I'll actually get a scientist who's eager. In fact, actually, I can check that ahead of time, can't I? Yes, I can actually check whether I'm going to get an eager scientist. So hang on. Scientist... Tragically, no. Boo. Well, in that case, I may as well hold off until I've got 200 energy. The other convenient thing about throwing all my old work in the bin and beginning again is it means I can actually acknowledge all the mistakes I've made, which the comments tell me about, which is marvellous. Yeah, I totally actually misunderstood how uh, pop growth worked. I assumed if you had double pops, then you'd get double growth. But no, no you don't. Growth is divided between all the species so that multi-species pops, like say, xenophile high migration attraction empires can't just massively outgrow everyone. If you've got multiple biological pops growing at the same time, the growth is just divided between them. The only way to actually truly double pop populations is to get robots, because then you're allowed to actually have a robot growing at its own rate at the same time as a biological pop is growing at its own rate too, which I suppose makes sense, because in that instance, you're actually kind of spending energy or minerals in order to actually get a pop growing, so you're actually choosing to invest your resources in growing faster, whereas otherwise it would just provide you yeah, an unfair advantage to the, uh, the multi-species empires. So that does kind of make sense. Thank you, comments. Also, I hope this is nicer in general. Like, you know, I did decide to do this over, so this would be nicer for you. So I'm hoping this is all a lot more readable. It really should be. Also, I did realise later, obviously, I didn't actually do enough to the humans in terms of their rights. I need to move them from full military service down to limited military service. They can't be admirals or generals, but they can still be armies. I also need to move their citizenship 
down from full citizenship to residents so they can't produce leaders full stop. Because I don't want the humans producing any leaders because of the fact that they are fleeting and thus die young. And generally you just want your leaders to live as long as possible. Uh, so even though that hits their happiness by 5%, honestly, as serviles they get a decent amount of bonus happiness anyway. Yeah, they get happiness plus 10% by default. And also, um, I'm giving them social welfare. So their happiness should be just fine. And this just means all my leaders are going to be cats. Which is much, much better. Because they will live a bit longer. The humans are not taking this you're not allowed to be leaders thing particularly seriously by the looks of things. Possibly the next time the game reshuffles the leaders. At that point, the humans disappear out. Because, uh, yeah, the humans are apparently quite bloody keen. Including the same, that's blatantly the same person. Alright, you're the same person who's just applied with two different CVs. So my kind of starting point for this is looking up here, to be honest, because yeah, we've got a nice little thing here, a nice little thing here. If I could basically lock down these two systems, and I could just lock down, yeah, literally this one system, then all of this up here belongs to me, and would be nice and simple to just lock down slowly at my convenience, assuming no one's already up here. <laughs> There could well already be a flipping fall empire up there for all I know. But yeah, that's what I like about this new system. Especially when it comes to uh, high planes only and the two-arm spiral. There's loads of areas to look at and just think, Ooh, okay, this choke point I need to hold, this choke point I need to hold. I love the new choke points. They work so well. And actually, ooh, this is working a bit more nicely. Hang on, what have we got here? That's a, that's a big tropical world. That's a much smaller tropical world. Okay, you go in here. Let's see what we got going on. Okay, tropical world, absolutely flipping tons of science here. Though, rather irritating, just a single mineral. Not one mineral present, but yeah, loads of science. Actually, isn't this a thing? I swear they announced this in a dev diary long, long ago, but I can't remember when it came in or if it's still true in 2.0. Where, yeah, the kind of tropical and continental worlds are supposed to be science heavy, whereas the deserty worlds are more mineral heavy and the cold worlds are more energy heavy? Or was it the other way around for the cold and the, the deserty? I can't remember. Still, we've got enough food to actually kick us off here. And a lot of science. But yeah, not a single mineral patch. And a weak magnetic field for habitability and growth speed down. Which is unfortunate, but the tabbies grow pretty fast. It should be manageable. That's definitely got to be our first destination. This other planet over here, meanwhile. Yeah, we've actually got some minerals over here, but it's a lot smaller. Three mineral patch here is nice to have, though. Fair few tile blockers though, uh, actually a few tile blockers here, but a lot more open spaces and no negative impact on the entire planet. Okay, fine, no problem there then. Right, as that's likely our starting point here, just send my construction ship, we'll just start expanding the empire in this direction. Oh, perfect timing, we've actually just gone ourselves reach for the stars, which means hang on, hang on, construction ship, stop, don't do that, and now you can do it, lovely. <laughs> now just do it, but this time do it slightly cheaper, thank you. In fact, actually, as I've got myself, yeah, I'm floating 99 influence right now, and the limiting factor for expanding is going to be the money. I'm going to take a risk and take map the stars really early. I'm going to regret that. <laughs> I'm so going to regret that. But just for the anomalies being more likely to show up and the benefits anomalies can bring, I'm going to give it a go. So as it turns out, we've actually got to start very similar to the one I had last time, which is we're really lacking in the old... Minerals. There's like, you know, a handful of systems with like two minerals a piece in, but I don't really want to be spending 100 minerals and 67 influence in a hurry purely to get hold of, yeah, two minerals a go. Okay, focus on the positives, just like last time. What we do seem to have around here is uh, plenty of science. Focus on the science, let's get a world down. And when I say world down, there's no cocking minerals there either. Okay, we are going to be poor. Poor, but extremely knowledgeable. That's the important thing. We've also got some big environmental stuff around that's useful to know about now to remember for later. So, very close by to our starting point. We've got ourselves, yeah, a pulsar right here. So, hang on, that's a sublight speed reduction. Wait, hang on. You're not a pulsar, you're a neutron star. That's apparently... Well, you look very similar, so sorry, my mistake. Uh, and apparently they're incredibly dense stellar remnants, marvellous, sometimes created when massive stars suffer rapid collapse, dear oh dear. So, sublight speed reduction 50%. Okay, remember, if for some reason we'd like the enemy to not be able to move particularly fast, this is a good system. Also, 7 engineering this system. I could double my rate of engineering just by going and taking that system. 
Uh, we do ever have that's a pulsar. Yeah, even if you haven't explored it yet, you can figure out roughly what's there. So we do have a pulsar there, so no shields there. So if I was to retrofit out a fleet with nothing but armor and no shields on it, then this here could be an excellent spot to potentially try and trap an invading fleet. Meanwhile, black holes, that is chance of disengagement. Uh, goes down massively as well. So potentially, if you think you've got someone on the ropes and you think you can take them in a fight, you don't want them to get away, fighting by a black hole could be the right thing to do. I love the new environmental hazards. I don't care if they don't make sense in space. They're really cool. Okay, I like this new playthrough already. We've already found ourselves some primitives. Advanced into the equivalent of the Iron Age, divided into numerous petty kingdoms and empires. Species spread across almost the entire surface of the planet. Okay, hang on. Who exactly are these Zum laddies and where have we just found them? Up here, close by two. Yeah, the system of Kador. All right. Interesting indeed. Let's have a look at these guys because I love primitives. This is why I make them more common on all my maps. So, they are our oh, perfect savannah. The thing is, primitives are a really good, easy way to get alternative. Yeah, feel free to research that. Go right ahead. Uh, they're a really good easy way of getting alternative uh, habitat people into your empire. Because I am good on tropical and ocean and continental worlds. These guys are savannah. They're good on... Also, they've got befarium. Ooh. Uh, primitives. Yes, exciting, exciting primitives. So these are... You just said they were spread across the entire planet. That does not feel spread across the entire planet to me. But yeah, look at that. They've got minerals. They've got lots of minerals. Extremely adaptive, repugnant, deviant. This guy's a pacifist. Let's see if we can just kind of tease out what they're likely to be. Okay, so they're likely to be pacifists when they grow up. Which is, hmm, not necessarily what I want inside my empire. But generally, I tend to like small numbers of little wars. So, yeah, okay. We'll invite them into the empire, I think. Let's consider making some moves towards them. In all fairness, they're not going anywhere. They're currently in the Iron Age. In fact, in all fairness, that over there, that city, that's pretty damn good for an Iron Age. And also, they've got an abandoned amusement park on their moon. <laughs> okay. In all fairness, it's good that I'm uplifting them and telling them there's aliens out there. Because that would have been one hell of a surprise when they just got their first basic space program going. They got to the moon and it turned out there was an amusement park there. Okay, I think I've figured out which way I want to be expanding, because yes indeed, we've just found ourselves 10 minerals up here, and other than that, I'm just basically desperately scrambling for minerals back on the homeworld. I'm actually, you know, spending energy to clear tile blockers, purely to get access to rich mining seams on the homeworld. And uh, actually, yeah, basically allowing myself to be losing food over time and sacrificing the growth bonus from surplus food just because we really need those minerals because I need to be expanding. Minerals are the most important early game resource because you need them to expand. You need them for colony ships. You need them for pretty much everything. And we've got our first alien encounter over in Gady. Hang on, who's in... Again? <laughs> that bug happens a lot. I'm not sure why it happens, but which one is Gady exactly? Because I'm not convinced I actually have anyone in such a system, but okay. Ah, there it is. There's Gady. Hello. What a... Oh. Oh, dear. Are you actually... Oh. We have started very close to somebody. Okay. That is presumably an actual... Yeah, that's presumably right there. A Starbase shop. Okay. Priorities just cocking changed. We are very, very close to something. Who are we flipping close to? Right, get all sorts of... Right, hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Okay, we need to know who they are and where they are. Uh, get a construction ship moving over here, like, now. Because we need to start being able to lock this down. Hopefully, they're not going to lock us out of their borders. Um, you potentially need to... No, keep exploring up there. If they're down here, there's a good chance they might be down here or down here. So we might have to expand north and figure out how to block them off, whoever they are. Hopefully they're friendly. <laughs> don't panic, everything's fine. And another encounter, but that is, don't worry, that's fine. That there is some of these bastards. Yeah, that's some form of enclave. I like the enclaves, they don't murder me. In fact, they actually murder pirates on my behalf, which is great too. And more things coming in here. Get the courier network down. That's absolutely fine. Is my colony ship nearly ready? It's approaching the new outpost. Not quite there yet. Yep, these guys have most definitely decided to lock down the Gady system. 
I don't like the fact that these guys... What style of ship is that, by the way? That's... Ah, that's plants. That is the little planty leafy thing. Okay. So we've got some plants. Oh, please don't be Venus flytraps. I hate Venus flytraps. Please don't be them. Well, we've managed to communicate with them. And we were within the borders of somebody. Hello. Who exact... They've got destroyers in the name. That is never a good sign. Fanatical purifying plants. Quake in fear, alien scum for your doom approaches. I'm going to tell them that love is friendship set to music. Just like us, the aliens appear to be relative newcomers on the galactic stage. Their level of technology is similar to us. Okay, they're not. Not an advanced start. This is fine, but they probably hate us and they're going to try and murder us. So we need to... We need to get minerals in, like, as soon as possible. We need to start fortifying our borders, because these guys are going to want to go to war sooner or later. I need to find someone else as well. I need friends, because we will be willing to join forces against fanatical purifiers. This is a momentous... It's not that momentous. Like, did nobody else get the message? Maybe we didn't share the message about, you know, filthy Zeno, we will wipe your kind from the face of the galaxy. We probably didn't share that with the public. <laughs> They'll find out soon enough. Oh, flipping heck. They're right on top of us. They're right cooking on top of us. Okay. Yeah, we've we've got problems here. We've got problems. We have got a... We've got baby fanatical purifiers right cocking here. You see, this here is why I quite like having random systems rather than like, you know, the game deliberately trying to group sensible things together and all of that business. No, I like it being totally random distribution because then stuff like this happens. Right. I'm glad I started over. Nothing this interesting happens. Like, the previous playthrough was quite fun, but we did not start right next to fanatical cocky purifiers. <laughs> okay, it's fine. We're literally, like, you know, we've both only got one planet. We've got just one planet. We need to lock them out. Okay, we've, well, we haven't lost a science ship. It's gone missing. This science ship needs to make it over here and lock down this system. Like, wait, what? Why is that? Oh, that's 135 because we haven't locked down. Where's the other one? Okay, you just move here. Move here. You get over here. Lock down this system. As soon as flipping possible, please. I need you to hurry up here. We have to have this locked down. But they're not getting influenced that fast either. Okay, um, the other science ship, you just keep wandering around here. Because what we're going to need to do is, yeah, we're going to need to basically fortify up this area like crazy. Star bases, all of that good stuff. Where's the flipping colony ship? Oh, dear. Oh, dear. This is this is going to be interesting. Okay, get the colony down. Because, of course, that doesn't cost anything anymore. The influence cost is just actually getting the system secured. Once you've actually paid for the colony ship, it's free. Um, there's actually not much point putting it anywhere because science doesn't get a bonus. I don't think science gets a bonus. No, I'm pretty sure you don't actually pass on science bonuses from planetary buildings, uh, planetary capital buildings, I mean. Um, so I may as well just slap it down right close by to some food. Because food does get bonuses, at least, which is nice. So I guess we could just slap it down here. Just cover up one actual social. One social is not bad. There's two other social spots right here. Yeah, we'll slap it down here. Why not? And then at the bare minimum, we can kind of put down at least some minerals there guilt-free when it becomes available. Though actually, if I were to put it down somewhere where there was a free spot available right now... Yeah, but to do that, I need to cover up two physics, which you don't want to do. Yeah, we'll just put this right here. Oh, this is interesting. What are we going to call this world? Because this world is all about science. This is going to be a really heavy science world. <laughs> And we've got fanatical purifiers to the south of us. Oh dear. I'm going to name this colony the White Heat of Technology because that is what's going to save us. All right. We can use all the science here and our intelligent tabbies to get the tech advantage. That's what's going to save us. It's going to be tech. Or we're just going to die here. Maybe we'll just die here. Potentially either will happen. But that's what I believe in. The White Heat of Technology. Get on it. Get down on the ground. Let's get flipping growing. How long until that bloody science ship returns? That's not back for two cocking months, unfortunately. Okay. They have only got one planet down. And they've got a station there. Uh, what do we know about them, by the way? They are deserty people. This planet is presumably also going to be, yeah, deserty. Because not just humans, but also the AI basically get uh, friendly planets nearby. Oh, they get a good planet. Obviously, they get the good bloody planet with the atmospheric. You know what? Maybe they'll just go there and get high. And that will be absolutely fine. <laughs> And maybe the governing ethics traction minus 30% mean they'll be like, hey, 
do we really need or want to purify the lesser races? I mean, come on, man. Maybe we should just be cool. <laughs> Maybe in a moment we'll just get a note saying, hey, a faction in favor of being xenophiles has just actually decided to become popular over at the Fanatic. That's probably not going to happen. I'm pretty sure they don't even get factions. And conveniently, the curator order has decided to communicate with us. Good. That means we actually get ourselves a little bit of influence off them. Marvelous. And okay. So. As it turns out, your plants too. Would you like to have a chat with, like, the plant people down south? Because they're kind of dicks. Okay, I'm glad you're curators. Curators are useful if I haven't... Oh, apparently there's another one. System survey complete. Are you all part of the same... Are you the same order? You may or may not be the same order. I'm not sure. Complete. Okay, what we need to do is... And they're expanding. They're expanding in this direction. Good. My first plan is I need to lock down this system. Okay. Then I need to lock down... Ooh... Then it's going to be quite difficult to that point. At that point, I should probably lock down this system. And then one of these systems. And basically just say, you do not get further north than you are right now. If you want to expand, you go further south, you bastard. But that's going to take a lot of influence to do. I need the factions to start spawning in. Because I need the influence. Right now, it's just a base plus three. But as an egalitarian... And also, with fairly low ethics divergence, because just in my first game, as soon as I can, I'm going to take uh, one vision for unity and governing ethics attraction. I should be able to basically form three big factions of xenophiles, egalitarians, and spiritualists. Those guys are fairly easy to actually keep happy. I should be able to get the influence up pretty fast. Okay, we've got confirmation that here... At Ush Mininara, Mush, Ush, Ush Minara, uh, Ush Minaria, it's Ush Minaria. We've managed to get here first. So we get this system and then we just lock it down. They do not have a colony down yet. By the way, would you like to. No, would you believe you can't actually ask for a non aggression pact? <laughs> they are fanatical purifiers. They don't engage in diplomacy. Okay. So I can. I can't even actually make them rivals. Uh, would I be able to make them rivals? I probably shouldn't annoy them. I think I need to... Yeah, neighbouring empires. As soon as I'm neighbouring, then I can declare them rivals. Which will be bonus influence, which I can use to potentially out-expand them, which will be useful. So I'm not sure they can declare me rivals in return, because they don't do diplomacy. Also, I'm scared of a cocking cabbage! Okay, the science ship is back. Good. Let's just get the science ship around in... What's the most important place to survey? Probably down over here. You get over here. Minor mandate's been fulfilled. Oh, good. That's bonus flipping unity. I could do with some of that. Right. Get around here. Scan these systems as fast as you can. If it's actually, um... Start here. Go to here. Go to here. Because, yeah, there's an extra system down there they don't have yet. So, if we could beat them to here, that'd be great. But, that's pure luck. I mean, really, what I need them to do is start expanding south. Also, I need to find someone else. Because if I could just find someone else, me and them could become buds. And we've also got... Hello. There's a thing over there. Yeah, why don't you just research that? As I actually... I did spend the influence on Map the Stars. Yes, I did. Good. Also, I probably shouldn't actually go for diplomatic grants. I feel like the fanatical purifiers aren't going to come around in either case. So, these guys can now declare war against us if they want. Because they border us. Marvellous. We, however, can declare war against them anytime we want without bothering with rivalry. Because they're bloody fanatical purifiers and they play by special rules. So, in all fairness, they already hate us. We may as well declare rivalry. I mean, that just gives us... Yeah, oh, our relationship's going to be worse. You know what? I don't believe the cabbage people desperately liked us anyway. Right, that's bonus influence. Good. We need that. They've got... They have closed borders to someone else. There's someone else nearby. Whoever that person is, I need to find them. I need to get in contact with them. But to do that, I need to send a science ship out of the way. But right now, I need to be focusing overwhelmingly on... Okay, how's their strength? Are they building up their strength right now? They have superior fleet power, but then I literally have my three starting ships. I need to spend some money right now. Okay, I should probably... Upgrade this. That requires 300. If I want to put defences down, however, that's going to require 217. Okay, throwing down a basic defence platform here wouldn't be the worst thing in the world. Let's get the fleet away from its starting location. Uh, so, Classy Swan, head round to here. And who exactly are you bastards? The Queptiliums. Okay, I don't think they're necessarily the Kleptiliums as far as I'm concerned. Deploy the Cabbage Defense Fleet. But before that, we've actually found an upliftable species. Okay, where have you just found that? Something to keep in mind for the future. Is this here? 
Presentience. Hello. Oh, it's the bug people. We found them again. So they are earthbound. Ooh. Energy credits plus 10% is very good. And they're another... Oh, they've got a good world, actually. They've got a really nice world. Okay, we could uplift and integrate them. Yeah, I feel like our future is up here. Damn it. Our future is very much up here. Oh, new contact. How exactly did you contact us? We haven't run into you yet. Hello, you're... You're duck people. Marvellous. It's not the... Oh, my goodness. Oh, my flipping goodness. They're egalitarians and militarists. You guys might just be our salvation, actually. Oh, they're... Wait, are they right... They're right down here. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, we can join in together. Seriously, there's like some fanatical purifiers here. You've probably noticed them. They're dicks. Could we work together to deal with that? The Tambi people have done themselves a great favour electing a Pontifex Faelis such as you. Oh my goodness, they're lovely. They're actually lovely. And they like me. Okay, form a non-aggression pact as soon as cocking possible. Seriously, let's just basically become friends. Okay, the problem is, yeah, their fleet power's overwhelming. If I can form a defensive pact with them, that might just save my life. I need to hold on long enough for the trust with these guys to grow to form a defensive pact with them. But I need to be strong enough for them to deem me worthy of being defensive pact. So that means, um, okay, screw it. Get a defense platform down while the cabbage defense force is moving over to this location. This is all going to be fine, okay? Everything's going to be okay. These guys can't be that strong yet. Hopefully. Oh, bloody hell. I just need to hold on and survive long enough. Oh, we found a planet. That is a 13. It's a bit small. But using the, what is it? The land reclamation or whatever it's called. A uh, new kind of uh, edict that comes from the new form of uh, land mastery or... Master no, mastery of nature. The mastery of nature ascension perk. I could make it a bit bigger down the line. Don't worry about that for now. Don't even think about that for the time being. I do not have much money. And the money I do have should probably be spent either getting hold of more money or trying to reinforce this boundary right here. Because, actually, this over here is not bad. Okay, you, head over here. There's four minerals in this spot. Where can we have more minerals? Because just, like, as many minerals as we can. Is everybody potentially working on minerals right now? We're building a new mine there. Okay, just throw literally everything under the bus for minerals just for the minute. And more encounters over in Arcturus... Which is obviously the center of everything, because I don't know. How about now? There we go. It's going to just get a little bit ahead of itself. That is another actual empire. Okay, we are meeting the neighbors fast. That's... Is that Mollusk? I think that's Mollusk style. Okay, Z-Tralians, which we just ran into up here. Okay, someone lives up here. That's absolutely fine. We need to have a chat with them as well. Oh, bloody hell. Um... Zetralians. How close are you to the monthly unity thing? Because obviously I'm trying to get some good text in, especially... Oh, 10 months to exoskeletons. That's good. Um, 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 um. Okay, prioritize that. Prioritize that. Communicate with those bastards. We need to basically make as many friends as we can as quickly as possible because we might run into trouble otherwise. Right, build a new outpost down here because with complete. four minerals here, that's worth doing. Lux Star Base has finished its queue. What was the Lux Star Base's queue? Did the Lux Star Base have a queue? I don't know what that queue was. I just put a defense platform down in the wrong place because this place doesn't owe cock. Well, okay. On the plus side, at least Lux is defended. Can I get a refund on that, Benny Chance? I probably can't. Oh, also, we ran into these guys up here. Okay, this is interesting. Hello! Who are you guys exactly? Hegemonic imperialists. Really egalitarian, but xenophobes. So... Hmm. Probably they're happy to live and let live. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. What we've learnt is... We need to... Right. There's a lot of priorities to do. Also, we know more about this world now. System it is... Complete. Okay, but not great. We can take or leave it. Okay, it doesn't matter. We need to expand in this direction, and we need to get this no system. Uh, governor's gained a trait, lovely. Arrested development, that's very bad, that's annoying. <laughs> I need everyone to be doing their best right now, not their worst. Okay, um, you, start heading in this direction. What we need to do is, absolute bare minimum, we need to take this arm. Because these guys, if they might turn out to be troubled later, and they've got, oh, you're just sitting on a... Oh my goodness, you're sitting on three planets. You're sitting on three planets in one system, you bastard. 
and they're nice planets too. Okay, a quick change to the law by the way, resettlement's now allowed because we kind of have to. Uh, so sorry about that, because I really, really need to get some extra humans over here, because the humans can help with the, yeah, with the food and whatever. Though actually, okay. Now I know that the humans will slow the growth rate, I'm just going to divide the growth rate. The tabbies will grow faster on their own. So in which case, is there any point resettling humans? I mean, I could do with, I could do with some humans over there, because the humans will let me gather food faster. Yeah, I would like some humans on white heat of technology, please. Just like one group. So I'll take a small group of humans from... Uh, I'll just take you. You're not doing as much. So you just basically come down here, resettle that. I would like some humans on this world because the humans get bonuses to food, which is good. And food we're currently actually uh, dropping, so it would be useful to actually get some food in. You get over here. You, meanwhile, uh, you manage this space with two physics because we need some science coming in here. Speaking of science, how's the science doing? You're working on... Okay, next time everyone start working on weapons as soon as flipping possible, please. Now, why are these guys not willing to actually form a defensive pact with me? Distance, relative power of empires, minus 11. But, I could get opinion up yet, because trust is going to start growing fast. Okay, I need to get a defensive pact with these guys. I'm going to need more strength and a bit of trust. Time will take care of this for me. And they are, okay. These guys are expanding. These guys are expanding, and if we're lucky, these guys might, yep, they've decided to declare them their rivals as well. Okay, lovely, and I'm gaining, yeah, 3.5. That extra influence we're getting off these guys is useful. These guys haven't settled anything. Actually, do fanatical purifiers even settle, or do they just invade and eat? I'm not sure. Well, they definitely get science vessels. They do have a science vessel just pottering around having a little Luxy. So, yeah, it's quite possible that science vessel is just opening up the way for them. So, of course, uh, you're not allowed to go into any system that hasn't already been scanned by a science vessel. So, as a result, yes, these guys are hmm, looking to potentially expand in this direction. So, if I could secure this world, that'd be nice. Uh, where's this construction ship? This construction ship's here. We've got some money... Okay, uh, focus on, yeah, getting some mining stations down. Uh, where's the money here? There's a two and a two. Right, get a mining station. We need money. But then if I spend all my money trying to get more money, it's then we're going to run into trouble as all, oh dear. At what point do I stop investing in getting more money and just spend the money on tech in terms of military hardware? Oh, this is interesting. I just need these guys to not declare war on me, really. All right, we've got a new election coming in, however. This could be good. I'm floating a little bit of influence right now, so I could influence this. Okay, what do we need? Edict cost, that's actually really good. Investor energy credits up. Eye for talent is... Are you the current... Yeah, you're the current ruler. So you've got... Oh, you already got reformer. Reformer for unity plus 10%. And architectural sense. And eye for talent. That is nice. Okay, anyone else got anything good going on here? You're also a reformer. Interesting, but you've got... Oh, you're basically exactly the same, but just like worse. You don't have eye for talent, and you'd come with orbital researcher, which I don't need. I need someone really with off-world minor, ideally. I'm not sure why this person wouldn't be like a shoe-in to get back in. Like, this person literally fulfilled their mandate. They promised to build off-world mining stations. They've done it. Alternatively, ooh... You are apparently slightly less likely to win, but Starbase module build cost, Starbase upgrade cost, Corvette build cost. Okay, I think, cometh the hour, cometh the man, we need a military leader like that leading us right now. Alright, seriously, we do. So, we're going to get ourselves a new military leader in right there. I've just had to spend a bit of influence doing that, but that's fine. It's all under control. You move out to here, ready to secure this system. I want these primitives locked down. I want this system locked down. Uh, yeah, the 10 minerals up here, that will make a very, very good improvement down here. What's going on in this part of the world, by the way? Um, food is going down fast. Really fast. Okay, how are you doing? We're actually building a new farm here. If need be, I could just build more farms. So that's that's fine. Technology. Ah, army damage and minerals up. Good. Good, 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 good. Um, we need... 
Robots are interesting. Robots would let me actually build new pops faster. But I need minerals. Yeah, geothermal fracking. I need more minerals. In fact, we've actually got mines unmanned right cocking now. I'd move people off farming. Except, okay, move people off... Move people off science. Tabbies are not good at mining. They'll have to just kind of make do for the time being. Um, can I move people off? Okay, I could move you off energy. We'll do okay for energy for the time being. Minerals are more important. You guys just get working on that. Okay, did we just elect the right person? Hang on, who did we actually just elect? Who's the current flipping leader? It's... How exactly a... I feel like we've made a mistake. Was she on the ballot paper? Is this... She's not actually a citizen, she's just a resident. And apparently she's let the position go to her head because she's dressed really cocking fancily for this. Okay, um, I didn't actually think you were... Actually, no fairness, you're actually pretty good. Um, yeah, you've got monthly reformer, so we keep the unity. And you've got fertility preacher, so we get the food up, which we did kind of need because food was becoming a bit of a concern. I'm not quite sure how you got on the ballot paper. I feel like, did someone just like die or something? This is all very peculiar, but you know what? We're just going to have to make do with you. Though actually, good news, the unity's kicked it at just the right moment. Galactic Ambition, Starbase up by two, Marvelous, and Ascension Perk. Now, I was planning to take one vision immediately. However, Starbase influence cost down and claim influence cost down. This would not be the worst thing in the world. Okay, I might need to take a more military one, potentially. Actually, there's no ones that give you, like, an immediate military advantage or a land grab. Because Interstellar Dominion, of course, used to just kind of cause extra blobbing. And extra blobbing led to extra territories, which was more money. Okay. I could go for Technological Ascendancy for the research. I could go for Vision for the Unity or Interstellar Dominion for the claims. Except I don't actually need claims against these guys. I don't think. Hang on. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Do I even need to issue claims against these? I'm aware. I'll do it in a second. Do I even need to claim against these guys? Um, currently unclaimed. Okay. I could... Oh, that's not because I don't need to claim. There's no need to claim the systems of major threats. Okay, good. I don't need to claim against these bastards because they're not going to claim against me. They're just going to declare war at some point, probably sooner rather than cocking later. Okay. In which case, don't bother taking Interstellar Dominion. Stick with one vision. Take the unity. And next time, we're probably going to start working into supremacy sooner rather than later. I mean, admittedly, supremacy is not quite as good as it used to be. I need to actually invest in, yeah, the starting and master ship rights, which will be useful. Then right of conquest, which is less important because, yeah, you don't actually do claims against fanatical purifiers. And then war games. Yeah, I know I've actually explained claims yet. Basically, um, claims are a system by which if you want to hold something that you've conquered in a war, you need to have a claim on it. You spend influence to lay claims down on systems that are close by to you. Except in the case of fanatical purifiers, you don't. So this is a very bad example. But we have to have spawn next to these guys. So we're just going to have to make do. Oh, cocking hell. What are we going to do here? Yes, and now all the leaders that are showing up are in fact actually tabbies. Because humans are bards. <laughs> I tried to bar humans from holding high office and one's become the cocking cat pope. The Pontifex Thales is a human. Something's gone horribly wrong here. Oh my goodness, the authority mandate is willing to do it. Form a defensive pact. They're up for it. They're up for it. What changed their mind? It's because... Ah! They declared rivalry as well. The moment they declared rivals, as a result... Okay. We got ourselves friends. Yeah, I'm willing to spend the influence being a buddy with these guys, because they will keep me safe. Yeah, form a defensive pact. abso flipping lootly. I'm happy to spend... Oh, it's 0.75 influence. Do it. I'm next door to fanatical purifiers. It will save your damn life, okay? Also, it will increase trust. This is fine, okay? This here is a good thing. Let's just see if they say yes. I mean, they should say yes. And you watch our backs, we'll watch yours. Okay. <laughs> We got ourselves some friends. All right. So. Oh, blimey. Oh, blimey heck. And the Athari Mandate also would like to actually shake our hand in the form of, yes, an actual migration treaty. You are welcome to. Uh, what's your territory of choice? You are 
Is that Savannah? I think that's Savannah. So they might choose to migrate out to me. If they do, that'd be great. I just want as much kind of variety in terms of habitability in the Empire as possible. So that'd be marvellous. Uh, okay. Keep the science ships looking around here. As soon as we're up to 100... You've closed borders to us. That's fine. Alright, seriously? I'm not really fussed with you guys right now. I'm busy. We've got bigger things to take care of. Do they actually actively hate us? No, they're pretty neutral. That's fine. Basically, I'll just stay out of your way. You stay out of mine. That influence cost really hurts, by the way. Down to plus 2.75 a month. Ouch. But we have to. We just flipping have to. There's no choice. There's just too much risk. These guys might invade and cause massive damage if we didn't. They might invade and cause massive damage regardless. But with these guys watching our backs, hopefully we'll be okay. And oh yeah, they are very much expanding up in this direction now. They're not interested in down south. They're being pushed north by the fact that the little platypus people, good old Athari, are pushing them north right. The cabbages need to be contained. We've got one outpost here. Let's just check what's going on in this part of the world. There's no other science vessels here yet. But if I see a construction ship in this part of the world, we need to potentially start running. Okay. My priority should probably be locking down uh, Paonia. And then we can basically say defensive platform here, defensive platform complete. here. They can have this system and... Complete. I mean, if we could get this system, that'd be great. That'd be absolutely marvellous. Uh, do you have the money to... Ooh. Extra four physics off that flipping black hole there. That'd be nice, but quite expensive. Ugh. Okay, I don't know. Actually, I can't expand anyway. My expansion is going to be very slow until the factions kick in. Just because, look at all this flipping, yeah, 2.75 a month. It's going to be a long time before I can actually expand down to Ponya anyway. Like, this has secured me from immediate destruction, but it's going to slow me down for the time being as well. So in which case, the moment we hit, yeah, the 90, you may as well build the research station. What was your mandate, by the way? Yes, it was indeed orbital research. Fine. So I could do with the extra unity from actually fulfilling the mandates as well. And we've got, oh, absolutely flipping marvellous. Okay. Alien Awareness Trust, that is the... <laughs> okay, so now not only is a human the cat pope, a human is also the founder of the first and only faction, pushing hard for friendly relations with alien species. I tell you what, that's probably a bit of a hard sell at this exact moment in time, but okay. Uh, okay, what can we do? What can we do to help here? Legislating passive study stance on native interference. That's fine. I don't want to be invading natives anyway. Uh, go over here. Natives, 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 natives. Uh, hang on. Where's that then? Here we are. Native interference, passive only. Marvellous. And that gets them to... Oh, flipping heck. Oh, flipping heck. Plus 2.3... Two point what? That's base two multiplied by a hundred percent due to the support level of the faction. Egalitarian plus fifteen. Okay. <laughs> I'm very glad I just made that change. Okay, the influence is now pouring in. This is why I wanted the factions. Damn it, the factions are useful. Okay, throw that down and then lock down this system. If you can lock down, oh, this system's got this system has got a lot of minerals in it. Right. If you could lock down here and then here, that would also kind of block these guys from heading up here. We could have Kathia pretty easily, and then these guys would be in a bit more trouble as well. Ooh. Okay, this is this is all fascinating. Also, the pirate event hasn't triggered yet. I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen the first kind of, you know, birth of space piracy. But uh, not yet, apparently. Also, there's seven engineering over here. I'd like to go and get that, but... No, the more important thing right now is to race the flipping fanatical purifiers. Uh, right, you come down here. By the time you get into position, you'll probably be close by to having enough influence. Oh, flipping heck. Right, what could I do to... Okay, this is why I should have actually taken the Imperial thing. Uh, Imperial Ambitions or whatever it's called. Because then I could have actually been throwing down the... I think that Starbase is cheap as well, isn't it? Isn't that Starbases as well? Yes, yeah, Starbase influence costs minus 20%. Probably should have actually taken that, but don't panic. 46 months the next one. Oh, it's because I haven't thrown down a bloody temple yet. Oh, flip. That's a stupid mistake. Get a temple down on the ground here as soon as possible, please. Okay, we've got the energy grid technology, but 
irritatingly, we're not getting weapons tech, and I could really do with some weapons tech showing up. We need the advantages we're going to get from technology. I mean, 16 physics, that's a very solid amount for 2211, but we need more. We need flipping more. Uh, assist research might be useful for speeding things up even further, sure. In fact, yeah, get that one done, because then there's going to be 10 bajillion science coming out of white heat of technology pretty darn soon. Assisting that research would probably be useful. Plus, it's a quite fast one to do, so we'll get a new option sooner rather than later. Okay, there's enough influence to get Paonia settled. There is a science vessel in Mernaz, but it is not a construction ship. Until we see a construction ship, we don't need to panic, because only a construction ship can actually get an actual outpost down. I need to start saving up some money, by the way, because there's no point having these settlements down if they're not actually able to be defended. In fact, the cabbage fleet power is now overwhelming. They're building ships. I'm not. I need to... Uh, maybe I just sacrifice the system and say I can't have it. Not yet, anyway. I mean, I'll be able to take some stuff off them down the line, which would be fine. Oh, dear. Oh, flipping dear. This is going to be difficult. Okay, we've got this system locked down. The question now is, do we want to try and rush to here? Because I've only got 17 influence right now. I'm gaining it five a month, and I'm going to need uh, about 67. So I'm pretty much bang on 50 short. So that's 10 months off. So that is uh, quite a long time away, to be honest. Uh, in fact, 10 months, I'm going to be able to gather, yeah, 320, but that's probably going to go up a tiny bit as well. I'm going to be able to gain quite a few minerals. Enough minerals while I'm waiting to potentially do some upgrades somewhere else. I mean, that's not a bad place to have. Or, or I could say, actually, you know what? There's no point you rushing down there. What's actually here, by the way? It's two and two. You, while you're here, that is, ooh, this world's giving two and two. Yeah, go on then. Slap a mining station down there, because that's four extra resources, two energy, two minerals. In all fairness, like, that's just going to get us a handful more minerals. You don't have the actual influence to slap down a new thing. Oh, obviously, space piracy's just shown up. We're busy, okay? Could you not maybe do something else? The Phantom Armada... Okay, I'll give you that's a good name, by the way. That is a very cool name. Right, have the tenants of Tabby ready to actually move in. In fact, actually, the tenants of Tabby can move over to here. So if the tenants of Tabby move to this location, they'll be ready to move out. Now, the tenants of Tabby, yeah, the Cabbage Defense Fleet will be 100% outnumbered. But the actual star bases have a little bit of defense on them. Good. So we get to very quickly introduce how all this fits together. Also, I don't have that much energy, but we should give you a leader anyway. Just start giving you some experience. What do we have here? Cautious weapon range, 20%. Oh, Gale Speed is the best one. Okay, I was wrong. Sorry, I think I misspoke in the first part. Um, Trickster is combat speed, but does not give you sublight speed. Gale Force gives you sublight speed. That is really, really, I can't afford it. Okay. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. I can't afford an admiral, and I'm losing energy and I'm losing food. But other than that, everything's going fine. Right, does anyone have any... I think we've got a power plant that's not currently being utilized, right? Yes, I'm pretty sure we do. Um, okay. The, the thing we want to do here is sacrifice, yeah, three minerals... To get six energy. Okay, now we've got the energy coming in. That's absolutely fine. So that means next month we'll actually be okay for energy. I'll be if I buy an admiral. Yeah, you just move up there. Everything's under control. Everything's fine. I just need to wait for where the pirates are going to show up. If they show up to Lux, that's fine. If they show up to, where else are they going to show up to? I don't know where they cocking are right now. They could be in any empty system around our borders, which right now is a lot of systems. The thing is, I'm happy to spend the energy anyway, even though this is a bit risky, just because Gale Speed is so good, I just basically refuse to not have it. Gale Speed is just too good to basically not recruit an Admiral if he's got it. Like, if you see Gale Speed, just buy that Admiral. Just keep him on one side. Okay, a little bit of people juggling, because Tabbies are okay at farming, though they're not very good at mining. We're under control Systems for the time being, because actually, yeah, we definitely want to swap that round, by the way. That's more efficient, yeah. If you ever see a tabby mining and a human farming, it wants to be the other way around, if at all possible. I don't know where the pirates have gone. They haven't shown up. Possibly, they got sniped by the fanatical purifiers. That is entirely possible. Oh, hello! We've got pirates. The pirate fleet has shown up. Fine. They've eventually 
bothered showing up here. That's absolutely fine. Uh, deploy the fleet to intercept. The fleet is close by, and we've actually got the station. The thing about pirates is they always go for the station first, but the station can defend itself. The station's got plenty of shields, plenty of armor, plenty of hull, and when I say they're... You're not going for the... Okay, you're, you're supposed to go for the... Okay, fine. You know what? Just prove me 100% wrong. Whatever. Also, map the stars has expired. Um, I need to get these guys. Oh, look at this. Look at this. Look at this movement. Look at that movement. Oh, that gale speed. That flipping gale speed. We might be about to lose uh, one thing there. Uh, what I ideally need them to do is come over here. I need them to come over here towards... Why aren't they going for the platform first? Like, in the last two games I played in Apocalypse, pirates always went for this first. Also, new faction. Happy faction? Popular vote faction. You've just screwed up my influence because loads of people have jumped ship to that faction. What's the popular group faction? Pops with full citizenship contribute far more support for... Oh. Right. Well, this has happened because of the whole... Oh, wait, hang on. Right, well, I'm assuming this has happened because I disenfranchised partially the humans. But all they hate is free movement. Okay, I'm willing to reinstate... Wait, hang on. Yeah, it's the resettlement thing. The resettlement thing. Can I actually change that? Where can I change that? Okay, that's still six years away from being done. Okay. Unfortunately, that's just cost me a bunch of influence, but screw it. Like, when I can... Oh, just this is so fast. This is ridiculously fast movement. Gale speed is the best. Right, the problem is I'm going to lose this fight one-on-one. -on -one. I think I might just need to sacrifice this station in order to let the actual station provide me with some backup firepower, irritatingly. So that is a shame, but it's just going to have to be what we do, because they haven't gone for the station first, which previously they always have done. Mm -hmm. Right, the edict's expired. Mm -hmm. The hostile fleet is there. If these guys choose right now to attack, that's going to be very annoying. Also, is anyone... Oh, darn it. I think we've missed our chance. Yeah. Okay, so... These guys have managed to get a construction ship over here. That's fine. I might have been able to just beat them to the punch, but only just. Is this ship doing anything yet? I might still be able to beat them. Hang on, that's... No, that's my ship. Where's your ship? That's... Oh my goodness, it's coming in now. That's your ship. That's my ship. Okay, get, get it done. Get it done. I might be able to literally just beat them to the post. I think I can get this built before they get theirs built. Assuming they don't have higher build speed than me. Because it is whoever gets it down first wins. Okay. This is good. We might just be able to lock down this system. Uh, I know we've lost that. And now, yes, as I was hoping for, what they've done is they've basically now moved into... And there's the attack. Like, these things have got really long range, by the way. Really long range. So they're now firing on that. And my ships are getting involved too. So my ships are now going over here. Their ships are clearly the superior ships. But I've got backup firepower from this here station. And what you're probably going to see might surprise you a little bit. Which is, as my ships slowly take damage over time, this ship is not necessarily going to die because it runs out of health. This ship right here, which is obviously being highlighted, is instead, as it continues taking just a handful of light knocks... Might be about to do something else that might surprise you if you haven't really been paying too much attention to the dev diaries or whatever. Which is... No, it did just die. It did just die. Right, what it might have done, but decided against doing, was warping out. Ships, when they get sufficiently damaged, can at this point basically just say, Screw it, I'll warp out. At which point they basically just reappear in a friendly station with low health. And you just need to basically heal them up down the line. So these guys are starting to take some bad damage. We're just basically throwing missiles at them, which is very, very good indeed. This ship, hopefully, might decide it fancies not dying today. Come on, demonstrate it for me. Why don't you just warp out in a minute? Because you are badly damaged. Shield's starting to come back here. Missile's coming in. They're down to two ships. But at this point, I don't think these ships have the ability to actually break the platform. Because the missiles will do enough damage. And in fact, I think they're actually turning their firepower on the platform. Because these ships don't seem to be taking much of the way of damage. Down to one ship left at this point. Yeah, it's trying to fire on the platform. So yeah, what these ships can do, but the game is determined not to demonstrate it for me, is... Are you asking me into a flipping federa- Okay, I like you. I'm not ready to move in just yet, all right? It'll probably not be a bad idea, but not just yet. Okay, we have won that fight. 
And no one actually warped out, unfortunately. I was kind of hoping one of you would warp out. Let's also take this moment to look at the fleet manager, by the way. Uh, which is basically now, you'll probably notice, I've got 21 for my total navy cap. But this fleet has a cap of 20. So obviously I can only have 20 ships. If I want to have the 21st ship or the 21st bit of power, it would need to be in a different fleet. Uh, the fleet system basically works as follows. You tell the game how you want the fleet to look. So in this case, I'm going to say, okay, a full fleet should look like this. I literally have a corvette, so a full fleet ought to have 20 corvettes. Now that I've told the game what the full fleet ought to look like, I can basically just go into the fleet window, and when I'd like to, I can just hit the reinforce fleet button. The game will then attempt to rebuild the fleet according to your specifications as fast as it can. So if I had like, you know, like a million money right now, it would basically queue up 18 corvettes at all of the nearby starports and start them kind of pouring in towards me, which is very, very cool indeed and very, very convenient. Uh, we probably don't need to do that just yet. Instead, this fleet needs to go for repairs, which unfortunately means it needs to nip back to Lux, leaving my frontier a bit. Oh my goodness, we actually got this. We actually got this. Naff off, you stupid bastards. I'm going to regret doing this. And the ducks totally want me, the not mighty ducks, want me to be... They're just saying greetings. They're just yelling greetings, but it's uh, clearly Federation invitation. I'm sorry. I do like you, but it's too early in the game for me to join a Federation. I'm happy just being in a nice little, like, defensive alliance. So I'm very sorry, but I'm not ready for that yet. Now, having sufficiently annoyed these guys, they're probably ready to invade at some point, And they do almost certainly truly, truly hate me, stupid cabbage people. I need to have my borders a bit better defended. So... This station over here, I'm going to immediately throw a defense platform down around it. Because, yeah, defense platforms don't exist anymore in terms of things that actual construction ships build. They are purely a function of your star bases. But basic star bases can have three. Upgrade that to an actual level two star base where it starts actually impacting your cab. You can actually have up to six. Six defense platforms. They can have massive titanic weapons on them. It's very, very cool indeed. Actually, you know what? Maybe these ducks down here... Maybe they're not an advanced star, because it's saying that naval capacity is equivalent to ours, which suggests that they're not actually an advanced star. Maybe they just happened to expand very quickly. They just put all their money into expanding fast, but... No, it kind of feels like when I found them, it was too early in the game for them to have two colonies down as well as their homeworld. They must have been an advanced star. Maybe just, like, not much of an advanced star. Just a bit of an advanced star. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I'd say that's enough for now. This here is our new galaxy. Hopefully it's a little bit easier for you to all read. I do apologise for that. I should have double-checked that. But yes, you know what? I like this galaxy better already. We've managed to spawn literally next door some fanatical purifiers. And next time, I would say, we probably want to actually go on the war footing against them. We need to actually, one, shore up the boards a little bit. And once that's done, build up the fleet and consider moving in. Because I strongly suspect these here duck people might be willing to join me in taking down this terrible threat to the galaxy that's on one planet. They're probably not that much of a threat yet. But you know what? Better to nip fanatical purifiers in the bud before they cause trouble down the line, damn it. And then, ooh, there's all sorts of interesting things we can do. We've got flipping primitives to potentially uplift or study over here. We've got huge amounts of space we haven't explored yet. We've just been so busy just desperately trying to beat these guys to various bits of territory. Yeah, we actually need to potentially do a bit more exploring in the wider galaxy. There's probably more stuff around here. Actually, who do you know? You know someone we haven't met yet. So maybe we'll do a trade deal with the actual ducks, the Athari, in order to potentially uh, get them to share communications with us. Because there's someone else nearby they've had a chat with. This is a cool little galaxy. You know what? I'm glad I restarted. This has been a really fascinating start. So, we will be picking that up very, very soon indeed. In fact, you know what? I will confirm it now. This is, of course, going to be a full series. Medieval 2 Total War is about to come to an end. Its grand finale is tomorrow. And after that, Stellaris Apocalypse is taking its place. So, Stellaris Apocalypse from now on will be every Sunday and Thursday. Not tomorrow Thursday, because tomorrow Thursday is the grand finale of Medieval 2. After that point, every Sunday, every Thursday. Oh, it's good. It's very, very good indeed. I like the new system of borders. I like a lot about it. Like, it probably feels a little slow at first if you're a traditional Stellaris player, but I think it just makes everything a lot more tactical and interesting and creates really interesting races for territory and choke points that you want to barricade up. And I think we'll see that in the next part as well as we actually move into a war footing ready to take down these bastard fanatical cabbages before they decide to take me down in response. So, all of that coming up very, very soon indeed. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd, and this has been Stellaris Apocalypse. Thank you very much, and goodbye.
Oh no! Oh dear! America's decided they do not like us! Just want to finish off China. I can die happily. Well, not happily because there's nuclear fire involved, but moderately happily. There we go! I've just started... Oh god. The Earth was fun, wasn't it? We can all agree the Earth was great. 